Hi guys, and welcome to this uh, series of videos where I actually address some of your comments. I've had a few comments about snakes, and uh, we've all seen these YouTube videos, crazy cobras and pythons found in, in toilets, guys being bitten in certain areas that seem quite painful. And, uh, and this guy, I mean, I couldn't believe this video where uh, a rat snake came into a police station and was actually attacking this guy. He dealt with it expertly, taking the dangerous end of the snake, the head, out of action. And uh, I think the police were pretty freaked out when he walked in to the office with that in his hands. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to be sharing my experiences, a heartbreaking story, uh, my top 10 tips for dealing with snakes, especially if you have pets. So stick around. Snake facts. There are over 230 species of snake in Thailand, 60 of those being venomous. Now, over 7,000 snake bites occur annually here, with hundreds being killed. And surprisingly, according to experts, many of the most lethal snake species live in the Bangkok area. Now, snakes, unlike that police station clip, are mostly shy, timid creatures that will only attack when provoked, startled, or in some cases, guarding a nest. Yeah, that last point is true. I didn't see a snake for, I don't know, the first two years I was here. I was living in Bangkok and Chiang Mai. When I moved here to a rural part of Thailand that had dogs that like to hunt snakes, that's when, yeah, I saw snakes on nearly a daily basis. So before we get into the 10 points, I just want to say these are my experiences. I'm not a snake expert. So on that note, let's get on with it. Top 10 tips. Okay, number one, and probably the most important one to keep snakes away from your house, is to keep the areas around your house clear. And this is a prime example of what not to do. I've got loads of leaves there where snakes can conceal themselves. I've got long grass. Snakes hate being exposed out in the open. So yeah, keep your grass down, your leaves clear, and yeah, you'll see less snakes around your house. Number two is if you have no knowledge of snakes, call the snake guy at every village here in Thailand or town has someone you can call. You need to find out what that number is to get them around. The best thing to do is to close the door or area where that snake is and let these guys deal with it. Uh, if you are knowledgeable and you do know, as I did, I became more knowledgeable through calling these guys. I knew what snakes to stay away from. You do the same thing, you close the door and you get a broom or a brush and you just sweep them to the uh, nearest exit point. But yeah, if you're not sure, don't mess about, call the snake guys. Okay, so number three is stamp your feet and use a walking stick. Snakes are deaf and they're partially sighted, so they will pick up vibrations if you stamp your feet, if you're not sure, if there's something lurking. And similarly, you can do something with a stick, give it a bash on the ground. The snake will pick up the vibration and move on its merry way. Now, this is particularly important in the cold season because snakes are cold-blooded and uh, they do bask in the morning sun to uh, warm themselves and they're usually sleepy. So, uh, yeah. Stamp the ground and have a stick. And number four is, yeah, knowledge. Get knowledge of the snakes that, that are, are in your area. In this particular area, it's really rat snakes, tree snakes, cobra, and king cobra. Uh, the tree snake and the rat snake aren't venomous, or they're, they're not dangerous, but the rat snake, from a distance, looks similar to a cobra. The defining difference is the thickness of the neck. I'm always checking to see the thickness of the neck, even when the cobra's not in a defensive position. It has a thick neck and a black body with a yellow underbelly, the ones here. But you do have to be careful. There are snakes that look similar, especially on coastal areas and down the south, you have the crate snake uh, with rings on it. A beautiful looking animal, but deadly. This can be confused with the wolf snake. So you need to be knowledgeable. Uh, don't go playing around and, and thinking you know stuff unless you're 100% sure. And as I said before, if you're not sure, call the snake guys. Okay, number five is don't wear headphones in the garden. Um, why? Because I had an experience where I was wearing headphones in the garden and my wife uh, said they were shouting at me saying, yeah, there was a snake nearby. I was unaware of it. Now, snakes do make a certain noise when they're moving through leaves. It is very distinguishable from a, from a rat, mouse, or a lizard who move in a sort of jerky uh, motion. Snakes do slither, and you can almost hear that noise because all of their body pretty much is in contact with the leaves, and it makes a certain sound, and you'll get used to it. So yeah, you need to pay attention when you're in the garden, and uh, yeah, don't wear headphones. Number six is to look above and below. Yeah, I mean, I'm in the garden a lot. And I have had an instance where actually when I'm leaving the house, there's a bush that's, that's quite high level. And when I'm going to open the gate, I walk past it and I did have a, a tree snake actually uh, strike out at me. I wasn't aware of it. It was quite high up. I just caught it in my eye line and was able to get out of the way. So yeah, just be aware that they're great climbers. And yeah, if you're out in the parks or you're out on a walk, just be aware of what's going on above you. 
Number seven is rodent control. If you've got a mouse problem, we did have this before. They've made nests in our rattan sofas in the filter box of my car. Uh, they go through the nets here and the snakes basically follow the scent of these rodents and you're gonna attract more snakes. So keep your rodent problem if you have one under control. Also try and keep your garage tidy, clear of litter and don't throw food or food waste into the garden. Right, the next three points are about trying to protect your dogs. And this, uh, but before I do, I just want to share a story with you quickly about how uh, we lost our lovely boy, Bernie, the family dog, uh, to a cobra bite. I was doing the washing up as you do, and I noticed a kerfuffle by the hedge down there, and Bernie had a snake in his mouth. He was thrashing it left and right. I just dropped everything, ran out. I heard him squeal, as you would when you maybe stand on their tail by accident, and I noticed a spitting cobra, a very small one, um, on the floor with puncture wounds. And he ran to the garage where my wife was doing something, and on his return to me, he just collapsed at my feet and uh, was basically dying. I just picked him up and ran as fast as I could uh, and put him in the back of the truck. So I proceeded to drive to the vets at about 150 kilometers an hour. Uh, the vet said, yeah, he was a goner, basically. The vet was pumping his heart. It was quite strange. He'd come back to life and I was excited. And the vet told me, no, he's just, his heart is shutting down. The toxins are shutting his heart down and there's nothing he could do. Uh, the next thing I did isn't recommended. I ran into the emergency room of the local hospital here in Dak, basically uh, with Bernie in my arms, shouting, uh, I'll pay anything for some anti-venom and I got quickly escorted out by some angry security guards and nurses. It was a really nasty uh, afternoon and etched on my memory like it was yesterday. I had to break the news to the kids. He was, yeah, he was such a lovely dog uh, in his prime. So it was uh, a lesson that these creatures uh, don't mess around. They do have a deadly bite. He was dead very quickly. Apparently he got bitten on his ear, which has a lot of nerve endings and that helped the uh, progression of the venom. So yeah, I usually have a, a pole, a long pole around the garden because yeah, my team of dogs were, well, once they got saw a snake, that was it. You can't get them off. They're into a, like a hunting frenzy. But this stick was useful. If I saw a snake in the garden and I spotted it before the dogs, I would just bash it on the ground and uh, not antagonizing the snake, but just uh, the vibrations would maybe send the snake off and over the wall or out of the garden. Now also, yeah, the Alsatian dog that I had was particularly keen on King Cobras for some reason and got into a few fights. I used this stick and I'm not recommending you do this. This is what I did because I, yeah, I just feared for my dog's life. Well, let's say this pot is the dog and the Cobras here. I would just get the stick in between and bash my dog's chest until she came away. And uh, because shouting at them doesn't do anything. A couple of times I have actually gone around the back and bashed one on the back of the head, which I'm not proud of. I don't want to kill these animals. I didn't want my dog to die either. So be aware of that. These sticks can be useful, but I'm not recommending you do this. Number nine is dealing with snake venom in your dog's eyes. And yeah, when they're fighting with cobras and some other snakes that uh, project uh, venom, their eyes become swollen. You get a lot of discharge from the eye. Uh, we treated this with saline solution. Uh, kept them clean and uh, basically the swelling went down after a few days. They didn't go blind. I did read that, you know, snake venom can cause blindness, but this didn't happen with our dogs. So yeah, just take care of them, clean them up, and they usually mend up within a few days. That's my experience anyway. Number 10 is the snake bark, as I like to call it. I could be up on the PC uh, with the aircon on and I would know the difference between the dog barking at someone that's maybe walking in front of the gate and if they're barking at a snake, because it's a frenzied type bark that doesn't let up, especially if they've got a, a cobra cornered. It's, it's a certain bark that you will, you will learn to hear. It means you can go out, try and get your dogs away from the snake, take precautionary measures uh, so your dog doesn't get bitten. And finally, escape routes. Make sure there is a way for snakes to actually leave your garden. When I did lose my, uh, my boy, Bernie, uh, we cut everything down, cut everything off the walls. Nothing was touching the walls. We sealed the gate. This actually caused more of a problem because snakes will get in. Uh, mammals, small animals will make little holes under the ground, get in. They got in. We, well, everything we tried, they got in. But because I'd cut everything back, they couldn't get out and it actually caused more problems. So yeah, don't have too much overhanging on your walls. 
but have a few vines or things that the snakes can actually climb up and out over and escape. And lastly, if you do get bitten, I'm no medical expert, but yeah, just seek medical advice as quickly as possible. You call the Thai emergency hotline uh, 1669. Uh, there are hospitals that specialize in anti-venoms, specifically the King Chulun Korn Memorial Hospital. So yeah, I'll leave these links uh, to some more information down in the description below. Right, that's all I've got to say about snakes. And uh, yeah, I have had quite a lot of experience. Uh, if I didn't live here, or if I maybe didn't have those two dogs, it would be a completely different set of circumstances. But if you do live in rural areas, you will encounter uh, these creatures. They are beautiful things. Uh, I, I don't hold anything against the snake that killed Bernie. It's just part of their mechanism. They've been here way longer than uh, us human beings. Uh, but you need to sort of understand their behavior a bit and uh, sort of puts you in good stead if you do come across them. Anyway, on that note, it's time for Phrase of the Day. Yay! Well, Phrase of the Day should be Word of the Day because we're going to demonstrate diphthongs. Uh, the word for snake in Thai is ngu, which is an NG sound, a diphthong, which is two consonants together that you pronounce from the back of your throat. Nga, 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 ngu. And uh, I'm very proud of that because it is the only word I can actually say correctly in Thai. So practice that, practice your diphthongs. It's not a phrase, but uh, uh, it's something to practice. And uh, now you know how to say snake in Thai. So that's all I've got time for. If you have got any other questions about Thailand, uh, not so much the personal ones, I don't know why, but there's a lot of idiots, uh, trolls I think they're called, that like your personal information and yeah, I don't know, try and use it against you or, I don't understand these people, but yeah, they're about. So uh, anything about Thailand, I'll try my best to answer in uh, these segments. And on that note, I say stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you in the next video.